тут, значит, у нас э, минимум пятеро, да, Владимир Сергеевич? Двое детей, двое детей, двое детей загинувших. Один травмований, да. Не, 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 загинувший. З той сторони також один загинувший, як мінімум. Тут, значит, у нас минимум пятеро, да, Владимир Сергеевич? Я була вдома, не все, а поряд просто лежали трупи. Тут був салон краси, там згорів чоловік в машині. Путін має велику трудність знайти росіян, які вирішують вирішувати його в Україні. Україні. Military bloggers and ordinary soldiers are increasingly posting detailed videos of horrific conditions at the front. Personnel changes in the Russian Ministry of Defense also hint at an official recognition that something is not quite going, as Kremlin propaganda claims, according to the Hill publication. One of the most convincing pieces of evidence of Russian dissatisfaction with the war is a billboard that recently appeared in St. Petersburg. The hero city has its heroes, the advertisement says. People are offered to enlist in the army and receive a whopping payment of 1.3 million rubles, which is equivalent to the annual salary of the average Russian. And what is especially important about this proposal is that the billboard appeared in the second city of Russia, which, like Moscow, is mostly free of coffins and prosthetics, the publication analyzes. The horrors of war are overwhelmingly concentrated in the poor provinces of Russia, where 1.3 million rubles amount to several years' salary. This shows that the Kremlin is desperate for recruits. Even more important is that two years ago, Russians were offered 200,000 rubles for registration. The price of a new recruit has increased by 650%. Even taking into account inflation, this is a huge increase, indicating that the demand for soldiers is high and the supply is low. In other words, Russians are increasingly unwilling to serve. With more than 535,000 killed and wounded and more than 1,000 casualties daily, it's time for Russians to realize that the regime is using them as cannon fodder. The Hill writes, this change of mood, according to the newspaper, bodes bad news for the regime and for Putin himself. Their working assumption was that Russians love punishment, that they would blindly go to their deaths like sheep to the slaughter. Enthusiasm for the war was high for several months after the invasion, but it waned after Russia's humiliating withdrawal from the Kyiv, Sumy, Chernihiv, Kharkiv and Kherson regions a few months later. Since mid-2023, the front has barely moved in either direction and Russian casualties have nearly doubled. From about 600 to 800 people per day to at least 1,200 to 1,400 people. Putin, as the building writes, is happy to exchange Russian lives for a few square miles of Ukrainian land. But Russians seem to be finally waking up and expressing their disapproval of senseless death. Putin and his comrades are in a no-win situation. If they stop mobilizing, they will not be able to defeat Ukraine. But if they forcibly mobilize soldiers, they will increase the incentives for desertion. We don't know when the tipping point for rational flight will come, but we can make two assumptions. The publication writes, first, the longer the war goes on, the more likely it is that Russians will refuse to fight. As the supply of volunteers dries up and forced mobilization proves counterproductive, conditions for overburdened frontline soldiers will become unbearable. Time is certainly not on Putin's side. 
And secondly, if Russia suffers a major defeat, the soldiers will most likely save their skins by abandoning ship.